Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Today in Waikiki, the surf is up. We've had three days solid of 20 foot plus uh, faces here in Waikiki. Uh, the waves are breaking way out in the deep blue. It, you know, it, it, deep blue is where the, the, the volcanic reef just drops off uh, and, and within a few miles of shore goes down two miles. So it's, uh, it's been a big day here. The surfers are all worn out. I'm looking out at the perfect swell lines right now, but I have to put up with my guest, Jason Jones. We'll be right back after this. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I usually begun, begin with a monologue, but uh, I think that I think I'll just de defer to my friend Jason Jones being here. So J Jason Jones, as you know, is a more than just a pro life advocate. He's a he's an animal. He's on the hunt. He's he's doing he's doing everything he can uh, to change our culture and to change uh, and to and to uh, give us every every uh, life a chance to live completely from natural conception to natural birth. But the, the weirdest thing about Jason is that, hey, Jason, Texas will let anybody live there. Apparently, they, they let you move there. You know, thanks to Joe Biden, it was really easy for me to come across the border. <laughs> when you got to the Texas border, they said, boy, howdy, come on in. You know, I, 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 you know when I pedaled my bicycle across the United States, I went through an area of Midland, Texas, but it wasn't even Midland. It was even more remote than Midland. And I stopped in and got some, uh, you know, some water and stuff at a gas station out in the middle of nowhere. And the the woman, as I left, she said, "Y'all come back now here." And I was thinking, "Nope, <laughs> probably not." <laughs> it's so remote. But I'm, tell us about your move to to Texas. Well, let me tell you. You know, um, I adore Texas. Like the people are amazing. It's it's fun. They it's kind of like Hawaii. You know, it's just. People are people. They love faith. They love they have they love their faith. They love their family. Their culture is distinct, very unique, especially where we live in the German Hill Country. And then I can go to San Antonio. That's obviously very Latino culture and big families. And so they don't look at me crossways when my family comes walking down the street. They smile, and I adore Texas. I miss Hawaii with every fiber of my being. But you know, if we ever were to come back home, which we will, we're going to be in Hawaii the whole month of June. Um, but if we were to ever move back home, which I suspect we will eventually, um, I'll always miss Texas. So I'll always be missing someplace. I can't say enough good things about especially where we live um, in German Hill Country. Yeah, it's beautiful there. You know, I, I moved from Santa Cruz, California, the end of my junior year in high school to Waco, Texas, which has become famous for the silos and the uh, the uh, the TV show the on. I forget what it's Chad and. I don't even forget their names. The, the 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 remodeling TV show, though. But I went to Baylor University, uh, and I went back for my uh, reunion uh, in I guess September or August of this year, and it I, it was amazing because I only spent one year at that high school, but the people just the people are, were all on fire for the Lord, and they and they greeted me so warmly. They were so glad to see me. Um, I just felt so great being there. The thing about Texas, and I, I know there's other states like this, but when you go to Texas or you go to Florida, they treat you like an adult. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Make your own decisions. Yeah. You're free. You're free here. And, you know, I travel relentlessly. And in the past uh, week, I was in Wisconsin, uh, Illinois, and Chicago, if Chicago and Washington, D.C. And then to leave, be in like a place like Illinois and in DC and then come here, you breathe free. And it is almost as if we should build a wall, uh, like the Berber <laughs> wall to separate us because it is becoming that different. Yeah, it's the becoming- blue cities, The blue states are becoming drastically different. And so do I regret leaving Hawaii? Not at all. And uh, it was just an amazing, it was a great decision. And we've saved so much money. We've made so much money and saved so much money living in a free place. Uh, the opportunities that's afforded me just in the 18 months that we were here that we could probably airbnb uh five months a year in hawaii um and be in a better place than we were living in hawaii full-time uh, financially mm. oh yeah 
we're going to be Airbnb there for, uh, we're not using Airbnb. We're boycotting Airbnb, but we're doing something similar. We have a place for a month in Hawaii and, uh, that's so you good know, that you're doing that, coming back and see your daughter. And But I'm going to tell you something, dude. Once you start having – those younger kids are growing up so fast. Once they start having grandbabies and and, they're, and, they're, and their wives are in Texas, you get more well, glued. <laughs> my wife's whole plan was always to move to Texas because it has so many great colleges. Now, my home oh, yeah. is University of Hawaii. And uh, so I've always I, – I my time at the University of Hawaii was heaven. I was just at Deirdre McQuaid's funeral – Mm-hmm. Uh, a leader in the pro-life movement and i was at her i didn't make her funeral but i was at her uh the wake and and talked to some of her college friends she graduated in 89 i graduated in 97 after going to the military seems like yesterday yeah and i was just thinking how life goes by so fast yeah so my days at the university of hawaii are like really were a dream even though the professors were leftists and i was chairman of the college republicans and founded the pro-life student union so it was a dream was- it was a dream for you but not for them that you were there. No, it was though. We were friends and we'd go do beers and we yeah. could disagree without hating having to pretend we hated each other. Yeah. And I wore surf shorts and tank tops and slippers to class. And yeah. And it was just such a beautiful time. So the, the idea of my kids going to University of Hawaii is something I always wanted. My two older children went to the mainland for college anyway. So my wife thought Texas is a great place because there's so it many wonders. Texas AM is an amazing school. Baylor's an amazing school. UT Austin for film. So I have a daughter that wants to be a, a director, uh, writer, director. So, um, you know, who knows? Well, but Hawaii always has my heart. Yeah, you um, can't. It, it stuck to you. Yeah, I think you said that to me once, how Hawaii kind of sticks to you. You're yeah. stuck. The, the aloha that's there, that's here, is is really so unique. I remember my son Shane uh, flew to the mainland. This is 15 years ago. He landed in LAX, and he, see Dad, and he called me, Dad, was there a terrorist bombing? What happened? And he goes, no, I go, nothing. He goes, everybody here is all upset and tense. And I go, well, that's just the mainland <laughs> compared to the laid back, you know, spirit of Oahu. I guess in the you- community, you know, I was watching the Jake Shima Makura documentary from 2012. I downloaded yeah. it from Prime. Oh, yeah. Prime. Everyone should, it's free right now on Amazon Prime. And, you know, I felt pride in him. I remember when I was a bouncer at Duke's. And Jake yeah. was doing like birthday parties, you know. Yeah, yeah, and and you now see he's the a legend. I remember seeing Jack Johnson hanging out at Duke's, or <laughs> you know, um, Nicole Scherzinger hang out with her papa, her grandpa at semi-pro football games, and you know. And, and who are the, who's the who's the Paul guy who? Gabbard was a little girl. Like we're such yeah. a good Andrew Rocchio. I remember being with her fiance when she won Miss America or, or won Miss Hawaii. And we're such a small community. Like we take pride in what everyone else does. And That's true. I, I, you know, and so look, I'm always going to be that guy. And um, yeah, I, I have to find a way to live a large part of our life there. But with so many children, we'll see what happens. Yeah, you know, the, and who who is the singer that was in Society of Seven? He's a hot. Uh, Bruno like Mars. Boy, yeah, and my he, wife loves him. I used he was to watch society Bruno Mars when he was seven years old. <laughs> yes. and we got John John you Florence know? winning the world title. You know, I remember when he was five or six years old, surfing on the North Shore, or seven years old, ripping these small shore break waves, and now he's a world champion surfer. And yeah, and the thing about Hawaii too, Jason, that's so unique is when you when you're listening to the radio here. I always have to ask my wife, do you know this song? Because I don't know. Because we have so much play on the radio from local bands that I don't know if it's a mainland song or just a Hawaii song. And you hear this great song, and then last Wednesday night we go down to the Moana, and that same band is uh, one of the one of the members of that band is singing that song at the at the little beach bar down at the Moana. So you know we get to have that connection with these great. Uh, musical artists and i think the music hawaii generates music so much of the music is about the land different area it's about places it's about the ocean and it's about ohana but how many how many songs do you ever hear about a certain mountain or a certain valley or a certain surf break you know it's unique it's beautiful it's poetic you hear it all the time or they'll take mainland songs yeah they'll make local and then i won't realize that they were like originally (laughs) sung by the eagles or something (laughs) and you know i was how about this uh there, I was in DC just two days ago, and I was at this kind of you know hipster restaurant meeting with some immigration lawyers and my Afghans that were trying to get resettled. Yeah, and I, I there was a poster of Alfred Apaka. Yeah, on the uh, wall, and you know I know Jeffrey, like his son. Right. He sings in the Hawaiian Village, and he, we used to walk our dogs together. And here I am in Washington D.C. and this icon of I think the 50s, 60s. And they don't even know. 
and they, they don't know who's on their wall. Yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe they do. I mean, he's he's he was iconic in those days, yeah. even before. Oh, you know that song? But yeah, Clint? I mean, look. Did you know John Denver? I, I John, there. I, there we I are. Collect, I collect Hawaiian vinyl. You, you, you know, know the song? Uh, uh, Country road, take me home. Yeah. West Makaha. No, it's West Virginia. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, it's horrible how the mainland steals our music and makes. Oh, it their I know, own. I know, I know. You were complaining the other day about how the early church fathers plagiarized you too. Hey, we're talking with Jason Jones. What's the, what's the best way for people to reach you, Jason? Well, I have a I have two podcasts. I have uh, this one. Two podcasts. Uh, the, I have, I have this one that, that I let you put your name on. It's the Jason Jones <laughs> Show starting to rise. And then I have the Jason Jones Show, but you're not allowed. On how that did you one. come up with that name? That's really creative of you. Yeah, I'll tell you how. That, can I answer it? There's a real answer to that. Yeah, but but I'm I'm a, you. Call, I was inviting to be on your show. I'm kind of afraid what will happen on that show because your his show is gnarly. You guys got to tune it in. Yeah, you got 30 seconds to tell me how you came up with that name. Well, you know the the the, the theme of my show is I want to talk about what I think about all day, which is those who are suffering from genocide, democide, war, abortion, da da da. Knowing nobody would really want to listen to that, not even me. It's blowing up so big. So what I do is I just talk about things that interest me and I weave in the work that I'm doing um, so that you're not getting overwhelmed with sort of the seriousness of the mission of my organization, the Vulnerable People Project. And also, I, I thought maybe I'll associate it with my organization, but I thought if I'm going to do a podcast, I'm really going to have absolutely zero filter. It's right. If you listen, you'll be like, did he just say that? What is right. he yeah. doing? Like, if you want to <laughs> dox me, just down, I, listen to the show. I've doxed myself. And I'm very open and honest about what I think and feel, the doubts I have, mistakes I've made. Yeah. Um, I, I, I only hold back on things that might hurt other people. Yeah. And um, why so did you call that? We got to take a break. Jason. I gave him my name because I didn't want to hurt my organization. So you doxed yourself. <laughs> I didn't want my. Train, if I called it like the Vulnerable People Project show, I would no. have to act professional, and I couldn't say certain. It's the, it's the, my show. My non um, nonprofit sponsors it right now. And it's our number one source of new donors, but I definitely don't. And it's the show has grown large, but I don't. But I want people to know I'm a human being that runs an organization, and I have thoughts and feelings and emotions, and I'm a person. There you go. I'm very open and free about what I do, so it's not a commercial. If it was a vulnerable people project show, it would have, have to be. To, a commercial. You'd have to stay in that lane. We're talking yeah. with Jason Jones. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. This is Dan LeBoon Markham with another episode of Country Up, the Bishop Markham Ranch in Goldendale, Washington. Don't. Americans inherently bristle at don'ts. An independent spirit is ingrained into our national psyche, our culture, and politics. We don't cotton to others, especially the government, telling us what to do or not to do. Heard a man once say, I'm so busy doing the do's, I ain't got time to do the don'ts. Now that puts the emphasis on the right syllable. True of stellar fellow citizens who are so busy doing wholesome stuff for country, community, and kin, they ain't got time nor inclination to do otherwise. Reminds me of my old friend Christopher Shank. Our friendship harkens back to, oh, the 1960s in the waterfront of the Columbia River, later in life as Harley Biker Brothers. Chris always, you know, he put his faith in action can design, build, and fix just about anything. He's always been Johnny on the spot for anyone needing something to be repaired, whether car, electronic, equipment, dishwasher, or someone's front steps. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatians, challenging them to focus on doing the do's. Said, he who rides with the Spirit ends up propagating love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, goodness, and self-control. Again, such there is no law. Can't do no wrong when you're hitched tight to the Holy Spirit. Well, as Americans, we may rightly resist some of the edicts that come down from our state government or from the federal government, but as citizens of the kingdom, we're to walk in obedience to the king. We do it out of faith and love, empowered by the Spirit. Jesus summed it up this way, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. This is Dan LeBoon Markham at CountryF.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community 
and our three-year School of Manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, and I'm with deepadventure.com. You can go there if you want to join up uh, and subscribe to our newsletter. When you do that, you get the video version of our of this EWTN radio show emailed to you the, the morning that the share, owes, uh, uh, the share airs, usually on Saturday evenings. And if you did that, you get to see Jason Jones and his cool fish painting behind his head and his actual real genuine imitation uh, phonograph. And re- can you really play records on that? Uh, on that oh, yeah, uh, I'll play one for you. What do you want me to play? Look at I brought yeah. some records. For you. Look at <laughs> I collect all Hawaiian music on vinyl I can find. Here's Jeffrey. I mean, here's Alfred right here himself. Alfred Apaka. Yeah. Look at oh. who I have here. Your friend Uh-oh. from Hilton Hawaiian Village. I bought this literally because it's your friend. Look. I didn't know I had any friends. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah, Annette, Songs of Hawaii. Annette Funicello. She's not my friend. Gidget is my friend. Oh, Gidget's your friend. Okay, and then this is more you. I should. You know, I don't have any friends anyway. You know that. I look at this. This is for your outfit. Look at this. Look at. Look at. Oh, I love that. I had that album, Jan and Dean, Surf City, USA. Here we go. I get anything Pacific Island culture. You know, my daughter runs the Mumu, founded the Mumu Library at the Palace. No kidding. As well, but look. Oh yeah, South Pacific. Anything I can get, you know. You know, my parents, I think, had that album. Well, listen, Jason, we got to get. We got. if, If we don't get rolling on what's been happening lately. Um, yeah, you know, Jason's got his fight, his fighting sets. Also, by the way, he's a if you've ever seen our, our, our show, uh, Long Ride Home, uh, uh, it's the it's called Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, starring Jason Jones. But uh, you, if you ever see his roundhouse uh, kick or his sidekick, you would not want to uh, met, you wouldn't want to be uh, you were a bouncer at one time, right? Or you were kind yeah, of, yeah, I was, but yeah. I mean, it do. At Duke, club, so really... so the way you bounce people would just kind of roll them down onto the beach and into the water. But uh, but Jason, uh, the other day, I'm I'm when this announcement this this leak took place with the Supreme Court, I'm going I'm turning on Fox to see what's going on, and then I see on the on the steps of the Supreme Court, all these uh, crazy people who are saying protect a woman's life to choose except for the woman that's in the womb, and then I see Jason Jones. <laughs> Jason Jones and I go, uh oh, the fireworks are about to begin. And I saw you kind of walk into view for just a few seconds, and I called you up. Talk about what's what about that night, and talk to us about what's going on. Yeah, well, that night, I'm really glad I was there. You know, did you um, just happen part, to be in D.C.? I was there for a wake, and and then I, I extend. I mean, I, I had to go there for a funeral and a wake, and then I, I had to meet with some immigration attorneys in D.C. that we're partnering with on refugees that were trying to resettle or reunite with their parents, these children in Afghanistan. And uh, so, yeah, that's why I was there. And so I went to the Supreme Court thinking no one would be there. The, the announcement just happened. I was a mile away. I said, let's roll up and just take a picture and timestamp it. Yeah. And I don't want to talk too much about this because I want to get on to some more important things. But yeah, yeah, I saw Antifa there and they had attacked a boy. They went and took a boy's rosary. Me overreacting, probably body slammed the, the Antifa guy that took the rosary. Then one of his buddies tried to punch me. I punched him and then somebody hit me in the back of the head with a, I, don't, I heard like seven different stories. I don't know. Gave me a flash knockout. I pop back up and uh, people were separating us. And in fairness, the the first guy that swung at me that I hit, he might have been the guy that hit me the second time in the back of the head with a motorcycle helmet. I don't know. He was Antifa, but he had come up and apologized, which just really blew me away. Huh. He said, hey, I'm sorry for, you know, that we started all this. And I said, well, man, that is just amazing, brother. Can I, I'm sorry I threw your friend to the ground and hit your other buddy. And 
can I go apologize to them? And I want to meet them all. And he said, Dad, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but what I did, did from that is, look, I think that the other side is being egged on. A lot of these are professional disruptors. Uh, I saw a tweet that was screenshotted, and I want to be fair to some of the pro, quote unquote, you know, the abortion supporter protesters, pro-choice supporters. They had tweeted that there there were instigators dressing as them going to assault pro-lifers. So we saw some of that at the January 6th event on our side, right? So I want to be open to the possibility they, they, the group that, that were attacking people broke Randall Terry's nose, attacked this kid with the rosary. They looked different than the other protesters. And so it's a big mishmash. So I'm really glad I was there because what I got away from that is if we as pro-lifers don't engage them, we remove the oxygen uh, and let the world see how chaotic and violent they are. Because I know if I go there and I see them punch a kid, I'm punching somebody. So I, I'm just not going to go again. I didn't go the next day. I said, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be involved in all of that because I really think that's the goal. You know, it seems there's a systematic effort to to divide us as Americans. Uh First, you had BLM. Our principle of unity is our declaration principle. Abortion denies that declaration principle. So we have to undo that injustice like we had to undo the injustice of slavery and segregation. But in doing undoing those injustices, it brought a lot of turmoil and aggression and violence. That's why when you have these certain certain clean cut conservatives like Mitt Romney or like the Whig party- Is he a conservative? I mean, Republicans. (laughs) Uh, Those guys don't want any change to the status quo because they know it'll bring about mischief. And and they want, they just want things to be calm so they can make money. It's about money and da da da. But progress does come with a bit of disruption. But we as conservatives want to create national unity grounded in our founded principle we want to work to minimize the chaos on the streets. They're going to, there's going to be, we saw in Los Angeles just this week as well, chaos. We want to minimize that. We're all going to have our battles in our own family, just like we did over BLM, just like we do over trans issues. So I've get, I'm going to probably do a show this week with a friend, a priest friend who had asked me, he has parishioners that their families are splitting apart because of this row announcement. And it hit me. It's just going to, I almost lost one of my best friends. Uh, over she was really blm we just got off the phone she she works with me again and she's she's awake she's like i was awoke now i'm awake and uh she had gotten swept away by blm really worked hard to kind of i feel end our friendship but i wouldn't let it happen we're going to have that kind of challenge again right it's going to be the intimate disruptions roe v wade is overturned look we've that's it the democrats don't have the votes to pack the courts it's gone it's swept away this is going to be a beautiful thing. It's a great thing, um, but it's going to create a lot of chaos from now until through June, maybe longer. Also, but I think we should withdraw from that. Mm-hmm. Just let America see who's the chaotic and violent one. They were they were shouting at the Supreme Court, "Burn it down, burn it down, burning down the Supreme Court." Yeah. Of course, the police didn't do anything. The media didn't cover it. They were, you know, they attacked the young boy with his rosary. I had heard one young man making a FaceTime live saying, I'm going to go snatch, snatch the microphone from that girl. Um, and yeah, you know, it, so- it's silence. It's, it's, they've, they've silent the onborn and they want to silence uh, speech. Yeah. And it's, it's a mixed bag, right? I was walking around the crowd filming it, if you remember. Yeah. And as I was looking at each person, to me, it was, I was like, maybe I'll do a film on this in the future or whatever. I was just documenting, getting as much footage as I could. And I thought, as I looked at each person, I thought they're here because they're concerned with justice. They're concerned with protecting women. They're concerned with the common good. They're con- they want human flourishing, just like me. But I have to say, as I looked at them and thought that, I really couldn't convince myself of that. I felt that they're here for because they're wounded, they're broken, they're angry, and they're thoughtless to the common good. They're thoughtless to human flourishing. They're just acting out. And so then in a way, they, we have to look at them as a patient. But how do we treat this patient as they're going to react? Uh, they're going to be insane over the next 90 days. If we get too close to them, it's not good. So you let's know what just it, kind it, of put them in a rubber room yeah, and let America yeah. watch them go nuts. It's like saving someone in the ocean. You know, you have to be careful how you approach them. You know, you don't just because they'll drown you. And so I see what you're saying. You know, you, I, you approach them from behind. You do what you can to 
to to to save them, but at some sometimes you got to almost let them drown so that you can save them, or they drown you and wow. and, and drown. And, and so so, but I love the fact that what you're saying is. Uh, Set back, you know, when, when, when someone's having a temper tantrum, set back, let them have their tantrum. And then maybe when they get exhausted and calm down, you can have a conversation with them. But to, to engage in, the, in that chaos is really a trap. Of it's the a enemy. trap. And I think yeah. the trap is not even that I don't think those that are acting out laid the trap. Right. They're just the cheese that were placed in the trap. Yeah, yeah. So let's not go for the cheese. Yeah, that's so good. But and yet, and we're their cheese, by the way. See, right. so we both go to the trap and attract each other, and the trap comes down on us. And neither of us really wanted to set a trap. So let's just not be the cheese. Maybe that'll be my article at the stream on all this. Let's not be the cheese. Yes, it can be in your sequel. Uh, it, it, the the old book, Who Moved the Cheese? <laughs> Who moved the cheese? Jason Jones moved the cheese. Yeah, that that's. We're talking with Jason Jones with Movie to Movement. And what's the best way for people to find you? We have the podcast and how else can Jason we Jason Jones you? Show, uh, the Movie to Movement.com and the Vulnerable People Project. Our website is thegreatcampaign.org. And of course, most of the world, we've gotten a lot of international attention. Yes. Usually Movie to Movement. It's exciting for me. It's sorrowful. It's been the hardest year of my life. Well, we, blind. we'll talk about that when we, when we get back. We're going to take a break right now. We're talking with Jason Jones, movie to movement.com. The Vulnerable People Project at thegreatcampaign.org. And also you have the uh, the Jason Jones. I shouldn't say the Jason Jones show. The, no, is it the Jason Jones show. We'll be, the Jason be right, Jones show. We'll be more right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure starring Jason Jones. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. I'm looking across the channel, past Diamond Head in the background, and then across that channel is the Mulakai uh, Channel. It's about 27 miles wide. And I used to have a home in Mulakai, you know, the home of St. Damien and St. Mary Ann. My father was a deacon there. But I would sit at my home in Mulakai, and I'd look across that channel, the Kiavi Channel, and go, you know what? I could paddle that thing on my tandem surfboard. People do it on special kind of paddle boards, outrigger canoes, stand-up paddle boards. Back then, no one was stand-up paddling. But I thought, I can do that. And of course, the minute you say, I could do that, it gnaws on you. It just gnaws on you. So I scheduled the time. I made an made a, made a appointment date on my calendar to make that paddle. I got up about 4 in the morning. So when I left Molokai, I was up in, it was in the middle of the night. But I had set my compass on my surfboard. And when I looked at my compass, it was pointing directly at the full moon that was setting on its way to setting into Diamond Head Crater. Uh, once I lay down on the board, I couldn't see the crater, but I could see uh, the full moon, and I followed that moon. I followed my compass. I followed the course. In our lives, sometimes we lose our way. And it's important just to keep going and going. You know, the thing about it, when I pedaled my bicycle across the United States, when I paddled my outrigger, my, my surfboard, 27 miles across the Molokai Channel, the whole key to that was one pedal stroke at a time on my bicycle, one paddle stroke at a time on my surfboard. As soon as you enter into an adversity, you're on your way out. The key is to set your compass, to follow God's will, to stay the course. And as soon as you enter into a, uh, the desert, you're on your way out the other side. So stay the course. Follow the true setting that you have in the Catechism of the Catholic Church and the Sacraments. This is Bear Wozniak from DeepAdventure.com. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, 
daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we have with us as our co-adventure guide, Jason Jones. Uh, when Jason and I are together, it's more, it's not so much a conversation as it is two fire hydrants being opened up and and just and 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 things just pouring forth so my my objective to, today is just to get out of the way and let jason jones roll jason so you were you were talking about uh the the recent events with roe versus wade it's going to become a red state blue state uh um uh, event right after after it, after the it being overturned the blue states will pass their abortion laws and the red states will pass theirs or what do you see what do you see coming yeah. up yeah yeah i do i see you know, with or without the overturning of Roe v. Wade, I think we're seeing a polarization of America. We're going to have the old, leftist, tyrannical, poor, violent, crime-ridden blue states. And we're going to have the vibrant, young, wealthy, and growing red states. And the division's just happening, with or without the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Uh, Roe v. Wade is just as an example that Roe v. Wade, it's already happening, right? It's We're already happening. You're in States. Texas. Yeah, we've changed the culture of the red states. We've seen a lot, you know, abortions at a historic low rate. Um, that's because of the plummeting of abortions without even changing laws. And that's why I make movies, by the way. You know, it's changing culture. Uh, Solon uh, of Athens or Damon of Athens, the musicologist, said, give me the songs of a city. I care not who writes its laws. I care who write the laws. Right. I want laws that correspond to truth um, and protect the weak. Um, but, you know, laws take a long time to change and they take consensus building and art and culture helps build those consensus. And although film is a collaborative effort as a producer, I can drive any project I want whenever I want um, and influence the way people see the world and I want people to see the world the way that it is. I want them to see the human being as the most beautiful created thing in the cosmos, which is the truth. And, uh, you know, I think film and writing and podcasting is a great way to do it. By the way, speaking of beautiful, you look young and healthy. You just had a battle. Well, yeah, I went through a lot of battles, Jason. Yeah, I had cancer and uh, the the radiation has done its work and but the radiation weakened me and I ended up turning my bicep my right bicep loose they had to reattach it and I did I was out surfing and I just felt it just what what just happened and then I had a and then where that where the um, it was prostate cancer and so where the ra radiation was done it weakened my hip muscles and I felt a hip muscle tear tear so but I'm, I'm you know the thing the key thing is I was in great shape when that battle happened and it's a battle and I'm running into people, you know, here and there, you know, their conversation with me, they see that I've been through a battle. And, uh, <clears throat> and I tell them, you got to fight every day, you got to fight for every inch and, and, and stay physically healthy. And so I'm, I'm, I've been, uh, and thankfully, my wife, she's just a great cook, we eat healthy food, and she's a great athlete. And so no, but thank you for saying that I feel I didn't know how, how, how the cancer had been affecting me. It had really drained yeah. my energy. And so now I feel dangerous. And when you wrote to me, uh, texted me and said, lock the doors, I'm coming to Hawaii. <laughs> I, thought, I thought, yeah, that, that, that sounds like my friend Jason Jones. But no, I'm feeling, I'm feeling just so great. You know, I have, Sophia has, has, has published two of my books, the, the republished actually the book, uh, the Advent, uh, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue and A Surfer's Guide to the Soul. And I'm writing a new book, uh, 12 Rules of Manliness, based on Jason Jones' life. But it's subtitled "Where Have All the Cowboys Gone," and uh, just doing great. Our TV show we're editing that we're editing "Long Ride Home" for uh, Hawaii now, which you're of course ah, the, the I main. Get cast I, 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 I think I commit mortal sin on, <laughs> on that episode. You still it'll remember? Be, I, you joke, still... I joke. I joke. It'll be the first mortal <laughs> sin ever shown live or shown on EWTN. <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah, you were, you I were, uh, you was, were the. Okay, for uh, for a great Hawaiian martial artist. Hawaiian artists. warrior does something very cruel to me <laughs> with a knife. But also we have captured some of your thoughts. You know, you spoke to the men's conference here and things like that. But anyway, yeah, things are going really good. But, I was, you know, speaking of culture, so that's what I'm involved with. I do my books, 
tend to be lyrical and uh, allegorical or anal- and, 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 and draw have a, a co- kind of a kind of a poetic way of drawing people to uh, to the truth uh, in a unique way in our TV show and I hope our radio show does too but I was thinking there was an emperor I was reading Warren Carroll's uh, I've got him right behind me or someplace Warren Carroll's seven you know his, his seven books on the Christendom I love, I, I love Warren Carroll. do you remember that that part where he was talking about how the emperor would send uh, his em- emissaries out into the countryside uh, one, I don't know how often, but he would, he would have them go out and say, tell me about their music. Because he was saying the music really reflects where his people are. If the, if the music is wild and chaotic, then he knows things are not good. But if it's, if it's, if it's beautiful and uplifting, then he knows things are good. You know, and so that well, that then, th- go ahead. I'm sorry. You can do that today. You could go to communities today, and if all you do is sample what they listen to, you would know. That's unbelievable. I don't remember that. There's seven volumes. I think <laughs> you didn't memorize it. I didn't. But make it into a movie. Oh. Make the all seven books into a single. Well, you know, movie. one of his books was made into a movie in a way. Um, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Conquest of Darkness, mm. inspired Mel Gibson to make Apocalypto, from what I've been told. Oh, interesting. Okay, mm-hmm. but to talk story. I mean, like, I'll be I'll be walking along the street and I'll hear this horrible rap music coming out of a car, or now they would like to wear them in their backpacks, like the old boombox things. And like no, that, can't, that can't be good for your soul. It just can't be good yeah. that this angry. You know, it's a reflection, though, of that of that society. But then you look at the other side, and what you're doing uh, is to, that the the goal is to move culture with your movies, your short, your short films, and also your uh, your podcast. And and by the way, Jason Jones has been um, muffled for a, a year and a half. If that be possible because of COVID, get him to come and speak to your uh, come and speak to your groups. I know he speaks probably. I don't know two or three times a week all, all over the country and all over the world. Got to get him to come speak to your any, uh, uh, any of your groups, but especially your pro-life. But Jason, I want to ask you now about what you're doing with that, with uh, what, what's happened in the Middle East and the Ukraine. Yeah, we know it's connected, right? Like, there's a line of gesture. There's a line that connects Roe v. Wade and abortion without any restrictions in this country to our foreign policy. Mm. And so if you look at how thoughtless and reckless we were in abandoning Afghanistan, after all of the promises that we showered on the people of Afghanistan and our partners in Afghanistan, um, we left, we lied, we deceived them, we left. In July 6th of of last year, when Biden said that Afghanistan will not fall, 85% of the districts had already fallen. He knew Afghanistan was, it had fallen really already. Um, And so on August 13th, I was on that couch with COVID pneumonia lying I down remember that yeah listening to a college lecture or something on my laptop that i had on that table um moved from my room because i just needed a change of venue because i had been battling covid for a month and i had covid pneumonia at this point my phone got a ping and it was a friend who said can you help my friend's mother-in-law get out of afghanistan her son made an anti-taliban documentary and they're going to hunt for her so i said i don't know if i can do that but let me do my best. And by God's grace, I was in prednisone and I did not sleep a wink for two weeks, partly because I think the prednisone for the pneumonia, but partly because just my nerves were just and when you have pneumonia, you can't sleep, you're coughing and it's just and and the nature of my organization is we run influence campaigns. This is my thinking that movie to movement influences the masses and the vulnerable people project seeks to influence influencers through white papers, we ghost write op-eds, we write op-eds through my podcast, through articles I write, through meeting people, the apostolate of friendship, we seek to influence. And so I did have friends at State Department and at Mercury One and sort of, I realized I had friends at every organization that was paying for these big planes. And so my job was to get people on these, I got the first, I worked to help get the first person out And then another friend called and another and another. And by like the end of the first day, I had a small list. We got those people out, the list got bigger and bigger. Um, Then the US airport was going to close. And I knew when the US left, I couldn't imagine that airplanes were gonna be coming and going. And so when I looked at groups like Glenn Beck and others that were really fighting for planes, 
I thought, well, A, my organization is not big enough to pay for a plane. And B, I don't know if this is going to work. So we'll just do what I do, which is the down and dirty work that anyone else will do. Let's just build routes to get people out over land. So initially I hired military contractors and we were shuttling our people into Pakistan over land. It was very expensive, very dangerous. By God's grace, we didn't lose anyone in our overland evacuations to this day. Um, we had a few very close calls. Um, Jason, so we gotta, we Jason, we got to take a break. If we, I know there's never a good time to take a break with you. We got to take a break. We'll be right back with Jason Jones, who's movie to movement dot com. Uh, his uh, podcast is the Jason Jones Show, and his book is The Race to Save Our Century. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you, to share the journey with each other and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus. You have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. My guest today is Jason Jones. Uh, I want to remind you that we have something really cool. I don't know of anybody else that's doing what we're doing. I don't even know how we ended up doing it. We just kind of kept following the nudges of the Holy Spirit. But if you go to deepadventure.com, we have something there called Bear's Man Cave, which was really inspired by David uh, 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 and, and Adam from the Catholic uh, Man Show. In, in the Oklahoma area. We developed a man cave, uh, which we meet on Zoom uh, twice a week, and we, I mean, twice a month, and we also have a, a, a Facebook type of community feature in our website. But then we developed a three year school of manliness. It's 36 months of rules and lessons for men, and we go through that together. The man cave goes through that 36 months together. Uh, through our through uh, and, and each month has maybe six or seven or eight lessons about a particular area, uh, video, written stuff, homilies from Father Bryce Lundgren, the, the cowboy priest, and and just all kinds of different things that you can click off and as you finish them, you can see your progress. But what's happened is the men have begun to say, I want to bring my sons through this. So what we do is we give them uh, a username and password. And uh, they're not allowed to come into the man cave. That's for adults only. But the fathers can lead their, as, as the fathers are going through the curriculum with, with the whole man cave, they're also leading their sons through it. Can you imagine spending three months with your sons? 13, you know, confirmation age or older would probably really get this. Uh, so go to deepadventure.com and, and join uh, Bear's School of Manliness. We're talking with Jason Jones, who's the whole, my whole, my whole life is based on how manly he is. Jason, I'm sorry. This is very distracting. I'm looking out at a 25, a 20 foot face right now, out at a place called Castles, where Duke Hana Moku, Moku rode it all the way to Duke, a mile and a quarter. I love okay, it. so back to the radio show. Jason, you were talking about. I'll be, I'll be looking at that. Those waves will be right <laughs> next to you in uh, less than a month. You, you, you met David Tafuri, the commentator from Fox News. That's a friend of mine. We were over there with him in Kauai for a, a day, a few months ago. Do you know that he, he had so many dear friends in the Middle East and in Afghanistan, and he's going through the same thing you are, trying to get his friends out that were so loyal to human dignity and to, and to uh, the United States and to their people. But do you know that his wife is Ukrainian? 
And so he's been hit with a jab, punch, hook, uppercut, he and his family. And she's going to have a baby any day now, too. Really heartbreaking. Tell, tell us a bit more about, uh, about the Middle East and what you're seeing in the Ukraine. Well, yeah. So you know, to, to, to just shorten up what we've been doing in Afghanistan, what started out as overland evacuations, we paused evacuations through the winter and we distributed food to over 300,000 people, four months of food to over 300,000 people, food and coal so they wouldn't freeze to death. I was wondering it's about that. I'm sorry? I was wondering. So you distributed coal to them? 300, yeah, over 300,000 people, four months of food and coal. Uh, my my team estimates that we delivered more food than the World Food Program. And what makes my organization different is, you know, my team in Afghanistan, It's there's no Americans. No, we're not trying to act like spies or act like military guys. I'm a veteran, but this is a humanitarian operation built with the participation of Afghan tribal communities and leaders. And we delivered over 300,000 people food and coal, get them to the winter that were the enemies of the Taliban. And then in, in January, when the Taliban's violence ticked up again, we began in mass, really figured out how to move people. So we're constantly moving people. If your friends need folks, just email us. We can get them out of the country. Um, if they need food, we can get them food anywhere in Afghanistan within 24 hours, most places within four. That's unbelievable. Yeah. That's and amazing. then because of our success to do work there, we got pinged when Russia invaded Ukraine. So now we are working with an organization called Solve Care and also Sist the Servants of the Lord, a uh, religious order. of 12 They have 12 convents in, in, in Ukraine. So now we have, um, among other things, shelters with 1,700 orphans. Um, that were sent from the orphanages in the east to the west. Now they're in our safe houses. We also have children with Down syndrome and autism. So we are involved in the Ukraine as well. And by the way, it's all new to me. We, we usually advocate for the vulnerable through words, through influence. But I told my team, we just had a meeting in DC this week. I found something, another need. There is no one else because of liability and all the risks that go along with doing these kind of work, a lot of large groups just won't do it. They won't even contract out. They just don't do it. And so I said, we have found a new mission that we have always said, we stand with the most vulnerable people in the world when they're most vulnerable. We met with words. And uh, I feel like our Lord and our lady were like, now I need you to do more than words. Um, and more than words is a lot less fun than words. What do you say? I got, a question. I got a question for you. I want to get dig a little bit deeper. You know, I'm Ukrainian. Yeah. My, my grandfather and my grandmother uh, came across on a ship with their parents, of course. And I think that at that point they were, they were appointed to marry each other on that ship um, and they lived in the Dakotas. But now you have this, this whole different uh, part of the story about uh, Putin's uh, denazification of the Ukraine. What is your perspective on all of that? I mean, they're, they're saying that the Ukrainians are killing themselves. That I mean, that's foolish. That's what? Look, I have a very... I don't think I have a very nuanced position. I have a very bleak, stark, honest perspective that angers everyone. So I'll share with you what I think. Um, yeah, no, I mean, come on, denazification of Ukraine. Not that the government hasn't partnered with some whack jobs to battle back the Russians, right? But the I, there's a lot of anti-Semitism in Eastern Europe, in Ukraine and Russia, so you can find that anywhere. And he's a Ukrainian president. He, he's he's, he's Ukrainian Jewish. President he's Jewish, Jewish. Jewish. right? So, yeah. So I can take a camera and walk around Moscow or Lviv and I can find anti-Semitic sentiment. You can find this across Eastern Europe. So reporters have a very easy job if they want to kind of say that, you know, there are Nazis in Ukraine, whatever. Um, yeah, there's there's a rise across Eastern Europe of some very dangerous illiberal ideologies. Alexander Dugin, who is known as Putin's brain, is um, ruthlessly, he wouldn't call himself anti-Semitic. He would be nuanced about it, but he's anti-Semitic. You have the recent comments by this general. Um, you can find very similar ideologies and streams of thought flowing around Ukraine, flowing around Poland, flowing around the United States, okay, if with the camera crew. So that's what they're doing. But that being said, it's not as if Putin is the only one that is solely responsible for this. I blame Biden. I blame NATO too. As the Pope said, the Pope was right. Pope Francis was correct that NATO is throwing gasoline on his fire, but most especially the United States. And they've been very open about their goals. The Brookings Institute had a report a couple of weeks ago. Others have said out loud 
that their goal is not for Ukraine to win, just not to lose, that they want this war to go on for a decade to bleed Russia. And the Ukrainians that's, that's are, it, yeah. are, are, as a people, look, if, if you're, someone's holding you underwater and they're in a pool and they're wearing a, um, a suicide vest and there are a bunch of kids in the pool, if you're the person whose head is being held underwater, you really want someone just to shoot the lunatic, right? But if you shoot the lunatic, you can kill all the kids in the pool. So I don't begrudge Ukraine for wanting foreign involvement, NATO involvement. They're the, like the kid that's being held underwater in the pool by the lunatic with the suicide vest. Putin is a lunatic with the suicide vest. We need statesmen to think about not just the kids in the pool, but to think about the kid whose head is being held underwater. And what I see is NATO is like, look, look, Ukraine is just a means to an end, an instrument to gut Russia, um, who we perceive as our enemy. That's immoral. Ukraine is not a means to an end. The people of Ukraine are an end in themselves. Um, so we need statesmen, stateswomen, people like Tulsi Gabbard, Hawaii's very own Tulsi Gabbard, Tucker Carlson. Um, they have been to me the soundest, most rational voices on this. To really care about the Ukrainians is to advocate for negotiated peace. This rhetoric about you know total victory against a nuclear power, come on, it, it's kooky. Um, it, well, we me, need to negotiate peace. We got an, another minute. Is Putin a good guy or a bad guy? I mean, he's a vile guy. Vile. We're talking with Jason. But that doesn't yeah. mean but that doesn't mean that NATO hasn't been rate. Uh, waving a red flag in front of Ukraine trying to goat the bull right they but have he, yeah I understand you're you're but from the side from the point of view of who Putin is to many people he's a hero yeah that's insane yeah I see that on the right it's I tell people when you're given a choice between you know Joe Biden or, uh, or Putin the devil says choose one say none of the above if they say you get Klaus Schwab or Alexander Dugan say none of the above I don't want the brave new world of Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates, and I don't want the 1984 of Alexander Dugan. I want a humane society that allows human flourishing and protects the vulnerable from violence. Talking to Jason Jones, you can find more uh, out about him uh, or, or get more information. He's just full of great, unique insight, and you can go to his, the Jason Jones Show, uh, the YouTube podcast. It's on YouTube still, right? It's on. I, I, we we other, stored on YouTube. We've never promoted on YouTube. People Where's the best way for them there. to find it? Wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm not a there fan you of YouTube. There you go. What I love iTunes. about but but you but what I love about it is your podcast is usually there's a video version of it too, right? That's why you keep it no, on YouTube. It's no, I'm not audio. as good looking as you guys. I find it imprudent to be video. <laughs> and movie to movement dot com. We've been talking with Jason Jones. Thanks, Jason, for for being with us and we'll see you back home here in Hawaii in about thirty days. I'm locking the doors right now. <laughs> You can't Tell hide from me. Okay. Till next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, if you haven't been to the BearWoznikDeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books. And since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too. Plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. <laughs>